G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy as we continue our series doing individual videos on 2024 AFL Draft Prospects. If you're unaware, there's a whole playlist. I've been doing this daily. You click up in the top right corner of this video and you can see other players I've done in this series. Bearing in mind that members of this channel do have early access to these videos. So today, we're gonna to talk about Hamish Davis. I've, I've been all over the place with the type of prospects I've been going for, and I've kind of tended to stay away a little bit from some of the top prospects a lot of people know about. And today's video, Hamish Davis, might be the lowest ranked in terms of consensus rankings of any draft prospect we've talked about so far. However, he is an intriguing prospect because he kind of has bolted from nowhere throughout the course of this season, being a very well-performed player, in particular at Colts level and then in the Waffle Seniors as well. So as it currently stands, he probably is the clear number two prospect out of Western Australia behind Bo Allen. What kind of player is he? Well, he's about 190 centimeter medium forward. As a forward, he kind of gets a lot of his ball through lead up rather than being, you know, an aerial threat necessarily in the contested situation. He's more of a hard running lead up style forward and I've seen comparisons to Will Hayward. However, over the course of the season, he really did prove the capacity to play up the ground, particularly as an outside midfielder where he has amazing endurance. So what his best position at AFL level is just at the moment is, is unclear. At the moment, he is a very versatile talent who could be a very good utility, perhaps a high half forward, a player who leads up and takes marks, but can also run through the midfield as well is his game at AFL level. But as I suggested earlier, he really shot to prominence this year by being really well performed, particularly in the Claremont Colts team this year. He played nine games. He kicked 14 goals and averaged 23 disposals. So a goal and a half a game and 23 possessions is really good going. And that earned him not only a spot in West Australia's team in the Carnival, but also a spot in the Waffle Seniors competition. He played as a forward in the Carnival and kicked seven goals, seven and averaged just under 15 possessions and six score involvements across all four of those games. But where he then further really raised his stocks is after that Carnival, he went into the Waffle Seniors competition and had a standout performance of three goals and 16 possessions against Subiaco and then in a final against East Fremantle kick four goals from 21 possessions so we're showing a player who can step up against senior bodies and play to the level very well. Further to that afterwards he went into the Waffle Colts competition played in the grand final for Claremont and had a best on ground performance with 30 possessions. So he's different to Bo Allen in many respects I mean they're both 190 centimeter and somewhat athletic prospects but athletic in slightly different ways. As midfielders Bo Allen is much more of a contested in side ball, whereas Hamish Davis is much more of a hard running contest to contest type of operator. I would describe his ball use as fairly solid, but he is quite audacious when he kicks, which means he's not scared of going for the most difficult option. I don't, wouldn't say he's lethal by foot, but he's at least the sort of player who takes the game on, particularly going inside 50. And as a forward, like I said, he's a hard running kind of guy who works over his opponent by generating separation, running away from and taking a mark. He's not so much one of those aerial contested sort of players who will be dangerous 15 meters out from goal, but he does pretty pretty consistently hit the scoreboard. And once again, we're just talking about a guy who performs well at every level and steps up to the next level very well. So I think there is a lot of upside for him as an AFL prospect. In terms of his testing, it really validated what we already knew. He's a really hard runner. He finished top five in the combine in the 2KM time trial. To summarize his strengths, uh, like I said, the endurance, of course, he's got pretty solid footy IQ. The fact that he can play in multiple positions, but also step up to different levels and perform well is really outstanding. The fact that he doesn't really rely on a contested game, which doesn't mean that he doesn't doesn't have one and he is a fairly big body. But the fact that he can use his running capacity and his general nous to rack up possessions at higher levels already suggests to me he could make an impact somewhat early at AFL level. Also, we highlight his leadership capacity. He was the co-captain of the Claremont Tigers winning premiership team in the Colts comp. So let's talk about his weaknesses. You know, maybe it's a little harsh to say it's a weakness, but in terms of describing him as an athlete where he's different to Bowie's, he's not as explosive or anything like that. He's very much a run all day. Maybe you could describe him as a little bit one pace, but like I said, top five in the time trial suggests he runs around at a good clip, it just won't be in a very explosive manner. And his ball use can be a little bit iffy, but like I said, he takes the game on. His kicking action can be a little bit awkward, but he's generally clean, doesn't make a whole heap of mistakes, and on balance is a very high impact player when you consider how much of the footy he tends to get. So picking where he's going to go in this year's draft is quite interesting. At the moment, you see him not make a lot of top 30s, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's drafted inside that top 30 on draft night. Like I said, the back end of his season was so strong, and naturally being West Australian, you probably do link him as more likely to go to West Australian clubs. So which 
picks are likely to be suitable for Hamish Davis. If either a Fremantle or West Coast want the local talent here, and they do tend to pick local when the talent pool is considered even, which this draft more or less is. It's probably a little bit early for Hamish to go at Fremantle's first selection, but West Coast's second selection probably falls around 30 on the actual night, and that's probably the start of his range. I would be surprised to see him go earlier, but anywhere between 30 and say 50 is probably a suitable selection for Hamish Davis. What play does he become at AFL level? I'd imagine he probably starts his career as a high half forward. Forecasting his midfield potential at AFL level is a little bit tricky, but from what I've seen, he could be a very hard running, versatile wingman who can hit the scoreboard too. So that'll do for Hamish Davis, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of him as a prospect. Do you want your club to draft him at one of your selections? Let me know who you want me to do in the series next, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.